Whether you're looking to buy or sell real estate or possibly hold on to real estate that you already own, it's important that you understand what we're going to discuss in today's video, and that's capital gains. The reason I bring up capital gains in real estate is because I'm hearing a lot of people at the moment talk about capital gains and they're misinformed and it could end up costing them a lot of money. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about capital gains in more detail. We're going to go over you know, how you avoid capital gains, capital gains exemptions, if you will. We're also going to go over some cases when you might actually have to pay capital gains taxes and what that actually means. But before we dive into the video, I want to be clear. I'm not a CPA. I'm not a licensed tax professional. It's important that if you are planning on selling real estate, that you have that conversation with a professional that does taxes because you could possibly will end up paying a lot of money if you don't understand this correctly. So take some time and have that conversation before making you know quick, irrational decisions in this market. Now, over the last couple of years, we've seen real estate rise considerably. And with that, we have a lot of people looking to sell their property. Maybe they're looking to sell and buy something larger, take all of that money and reinvest it into another property. Maybe people are looking to sell their property, move out of state, buy something cash, or maybe even take that cash out, buy another investment property, whatever it is, in many of these cases, you have to consider capital gains. So capital gains is any gain that you have when selling property above and beyond the base of that property. So what is your basis when you buy a property? So if you buy a property for say $500,000, if you sell it for $700,000, you essentially have a $200,000 gain on that property. Now, we'll talk about some things that you can write off that don't count towards that gain, but in theory, you have a $200,000 gain. And without this capital gains exemption, you have to pay taxes on that capital gain. But the nice thing is, as of 1997, the taxpayer relief of 1997, they came out and adjusted how capital gains work. So now, if you sell a property as a single individual, so you're not married, you have up to $250,000 of gain that is exempt from taxes. And that's important because that means you can make up to $250,000 on selling a property as long as you've lived in that property for two of the last five years as your primary home. So if you lived in it for a year, moved out for a year, moved back in for a year, that's two of the last five. So as long as it's been two of the last five, you can sell that property and avoid up to $250,000 of gain as an individual. Now that amount jumps to $500,000 as a, as a married couple. So if you bought a property for say $500,000 and you know, it's now worth $800,000, you could sell that property. You would have a $300,000 gain on that property. As an individual, you could write off up to $250,000. So there could be $50,000 in there that could be taxable, but we'll talk about how to avoid that here in just a minute. And as a married couple, you could write off the entire amount of $300,000. This is important to know because I hear a lot of people at the moment that are misinformed because they think that if they buy another property with that gain, with all of that money, that there's no taxes to be paid. And we're gonna talk about that here in just a minute, but let's talk about some of the other ways to avoid that capital gains tax that I mentioned a moment ago. So there are some things that you can write off in addition to that gain where you can avoid paying taxes on it. So let's again use the example of say $500,000 that you purchased a property. And let's again say it's worth $800,000. And let's say you're, you're, you know, you're a single individual. So you have up to $250,000 that's not taxable. So that leaves $50,000 in this case that could be taxable. Well, you can write off the expenses that you have to sell that property. So if you're paying a real estate agent, say 5% in commission to sell that $800,000 property. That's $40,000 in commissions that you can write off. And you can write off other things. And you can write off additional costs with regards to selling as well on top of that in order to try to minimize the amount of taxes that you have to pay. That's in addition to any home improvements that you've made on a property. So now let's use the example of you know, a married couple that bought a home for $500,000. And let's say they can sell it for a million five in this case, right? So there's a million dollars in gain on this property. Well, we know that $500,000 of that million 
is tax exempt because they're married, they've lived in it two of the last five years as their primary home. But in this case, there's $500,000 that still could be taxable, right? But let's say the homeowner on that property did you know, a room addition, they did some upgrades, and they spent $200,000 on the remodel of that property. And let's also say that they spent you know, nearly $75,000 in, in commissions and fees selling that home. So there's $275,000 in addition to that $500,000 that's taxed exempt because of capital gains. So they have $775,000. So in this case, they could be taxed on the additional $225,000. Now this is where people are misinformed and don't understand this. Because there have been some changes in the way that capital gains taxes are looked at by the IRS going back to 1997. So the, the misinformation is that people believe that if they take their full gain, if you will, so in this case, let's just use that example from the married couple, and you know they take that full million from, from selling the property from you know one five to where they bought it at 500,000. So there's a million dollars there, and we're not gonna talk about the commissions in this case, let's just say there's a million dollars. And their belief is that if they take that full million and go buy another property, another primary home, that none of that that gain is taxable. That was correct prior to 1997. In 1997, the Taxpayer Relief Act changed that to give individuals the $250,000 tax-free exemption and the married couple $500,000 of tax-free exemption. At that point, it changed the idea that you had you know, to put all of that money into another property. So if you did, in this case, as of today, take that full million and put it into a new property, Based on our example a moment ago, there is $275,000 that the IRS could come back to you and say that you need to pay taxes on that amount when you file your taxes for that year. That's very important to know because there's a lot of people out there selling property, taking that money, reinvesting it into other real estate, buying primary homes, whatever it is, and that could create tax consequences down the road. So if you're using all of that money to put into another property when those taxes are due, do you have a way to pay it? That's something that you have to consider. Now, if you're an investor and you sell a property, you don't get the $250,000, $500,000 tax-free exemption. Remember, that's only for a primary home that you've lived in two of the last five years. So as an investor, you can sell a property, take that gain, and put it into another investment property that's more expensive of like-kind property and avoid capital gains taxes right now but at some point in the future, if you do sell those properties, you're just prolonging the tax consequences at that point. You're not avoiding them. Whereas if you sell a primary home, you get to avoid that 250 and 500, depending on whether you're married or single. And people get it confused. They mix, you know, the 1031 with an investor over with, you know, the the capital gains exemptions for primary homes. And it's very, very important in this market to understand: yes, you may have gained a lot of equity. But because you've gained so much equity and the IRS only allows you to be exempt from you know, 500,000 as a married couple or 250 as a single, there could be consequences, tax consequences due. So it's important that you talk to a professional, like I mentioned, and have that conversation before selling your home or before taking that full amount and investing it into another piece of property. You just wanna make sure you know, that you're informed and understand exactly what's going on so that you're not blindsided if taxes are actually due. Now, I do want to address a commonly asked question with regards to this, and that's, can I do this multiple times? And the answer is yes. You just can't do it within a two-year period. So if you sell one primary home that you've lived in two of the last five years, and you've taken that, that gain, if you will, you can't sell another primary home for at least two more years and take that same tax-free exemption. So it can be duplicated as many times as you want, long as it's not within the same two-year period of selling that property. So hopefully that's helpful, but do me a favor. If you found any value in this content at all, hit that thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you wanna stay updated on everything real estate related. But if you're watching this and thinking, yes, I understand capital gains, I still want to sell my property, do me a favor, check out this video here. I dive into it in more detail. But for now, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. I appreciate the support. Hope to see you again soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.